Hello everybody, I'm Rusty Peace and this is the Rail Splitter Athletics Report. Welcome to this season-ending year-end review of Lincoln Memorial University Athletics for the 2013-14 season. we got a big show in store for you. It's going to take us all the way from the beginning to the end in terms of the 2013-14 season. Uh, of course, the LMU soccer programs got the season started and things were wrapped up with both the baseball team and the softball team. And we're going to go all the way through that here tonight as all LMU athletics uh, programs and their seasons have come to a close for the year. Uh, we want to invite you to pull up the latest information on the Lincoln Memorial University athletic teams at www.lmurailsplitters.com. At that location, you're going to find all the latest scores, facts, statistics, player profiles, rosters, scheduled, season results in this case, and much, much more. A lot of photographs, a lot of video, and again, that's www.lmurailsplitters.com. It's the LMU Athletics website. There is no other media out there that's more informative than that particular site. We're going to take a brief time out. When we come back, we're going to talk soccer, volleyball, cross country, and much, much more along with men's and women's basketball. Stay with us here on the Rail Splitter Athletics Report. If you love your car or truck, let us help you keep it clean at Soapy J's. Soapy J's has unlimited wash plans to fit every budget. Try our $5 express wash or one of our three monthly wash plans. The wheel deal, the Soapy J, or the new Blast Wax. With our monthly wash plans, if you pay with credit card, all you do is pay for the present month and your card will be billed on the first of each month. Don't forget, Soapy J's has free vacuums with any wash. Soapy J's express car wash open seven days a week. Let us help keep your car or truck clean at Soapy J's. Soapy J's on the Cumberland Gap Parkway, Middlesboro. The J. Frank White Academy is more than a high school. Your child will have room to grow in mind, body, and spirit. Small, safe learning environments, individualized learning plans, and cutting-edge technology. Every child deserves a quality education in a safe, nurturing environment. Our college prep program teaches a love of learning, self-discipline, and service to others. The Academy is fully accredited by Advanced Ed. You have a choice at the J. Frank White Academy. Since 1973, DeRoyal has been a leader and an innovator in manufacturing products for the healthcare industry. DeRoyal supplies more than 20,000 products and product lines such as acute care, orthopedics, wound care, and trauma. DeRoyal is proud to be the largest supplier of orthopedic soft goods to clinics and hospitals in the nation. Since its start in Tazewell, Tennessee, DeRoyal has grown to open factories in over 29 locations worldwide and employs over 2,000 people. DeRoyal, a name you can trust and an employer you can count on. Looking for efficient, compassionate, and comprehensive health care for you and your family? Visit University Medical Clinic. All providers are faculty members of LMU's The Bus College of Osteopathic Medicine and are board certified in their specialty. Multiple specialties available including family medicine, pediatrics, OBGYN, and osteopathic manipulative medicine with locations in Harrogate, Tazewell, and New Tazewell, and most insurance plans accepted. University Medical Clinic is here to serve you. Call 423-869-7193 for an appointment. University Medical Clinic. Welcome back to the Rail Splitter Athletics Report and this year-end review of the 2013-14 Lincoln Memorial University Athletic season. The LMU soccer teams actually got the season started. That was way back on September 5th, and Helly Odana and his teams took to the road to do it. The Lincoln Memorial University men's soccer team got the year started September 5th when they traveled to Montevallo, Alabama and took on regional opponent Eckerd College at a neutral site. Unfortunately, the rail splitters would suffer a 3-2 overtime setback that would set the tone for the first two games as Eckerd handed LMU their first season opening loss since 2011. Things didn't get any better when the rail splitters moved over to nearby Huntsville, Alabama to take on former Gulf South Conference sister Alabama Huntsville, also a regional opponent, as again the Chargers stole one from Lincoln Memorial in overtime, winning by a margin of 3-2. At 0-2 on the year and still looking for their first win of the season, the LMU men got their first victory on the road when they traveled to Dahlonega, Georgia and defeated North Georgia College with a 4-0 shutout. The celebration was short-lived, however, as LMU was again forced to use overtime for the third time in four matches when they played to a 2-2 tie with league opponent Coke College in the sack opener down in Hartsville, South Carolina. At 1-2-1 one, one on the year, the rail splitters used the push to put back-to-back -back wins together over Montevallo and Newberry before they were again halted by the Lions of Mars Hill and with an overtime loss from Lenore Rhine in Hickory. Following the back-to-back -back league losses, that's when things started to gel for the LMU men. The rail splitters put together a mid-season run that saw them win six of their next seven matches to stand at 9-5-1 overall and 6-3-1 in league play with only two matches remaining on the regular season schedule. Despite the late season run, the end of the regular season didn't go the way the LMU men had hoped. 
nor did their postseason play, as the rail splitters lost one-point decisions to non-conference opponent Lees McCray College and sack rival Wingate University in the final two games of the regular season before playing to a 1-1 tie with Coker in the quarterfinals of the SAC tournament and advancing to Rock Hill by virtue of winning a PK shootout against the Cobras. LMU suffered a 4-1 season-ending defeat at the hands of the Royals of Queens University to end the year in the tournament semifinals in Rock Hill. Elio Dana and his Lincoln Memorial University women's soccer team got their season started a day later when they took the pitch at home to open the year against NAI opponent Asbury College. After starting off the season with a 3-0 win over the Eagles, the Lady Rail Splitters endured every emotion in the spectrum by the end of their third match, playing to a double overtime 0-0 tie with regional opponent Alabama Huntsville in their second outing and to a 2-1 loss with regional foe North Georgia in their third. From there, the Lady Rail Splitters seemed to right their ship in the smooth waters of the South Atlantic with a 5 5-0 win over league opponent Coker and 2-1 victories over Newberry and Mars Hill. The streak came to an end just before October, however, when the Lady Rail Splitters traveled to Hickory, North Carolina September 28th and suffered a 3-1 setback at the hands of the Bears of Lenoran University for their first sack loss of the year. With only three seniors on the squad, the young but talented Lady Rail Splitters quickly regained their composure, reeling off back-to-back -back victories over Trevecca Nazarene and conference opponent Brevard College in their next two outings to improve to 6-2-1 and on the year. The LW women didn't taste defeat again until October 9th when our tribal Carson Newman University came to Harrogate and stole a 3-2 overtime win from the Lady Rail Splitters to hand them only their second loss in league play. As was the case early in the season when the Lady Splitters lost to Lenore Rhine, the LMU women responded in their next match in a big way, capturing a 2-0 shutout against first-year league opponent Queens University to improve to 7-3-1 overall. However, that's when the Lady Rail Splitters went through arguably their toughest stretch of the season, losing their next three consecutive matches, all of which were on the road, against regional opponent USC Aiken and conference opponents Anderson University and Tusculum College. Following the grueling road swing, the Lady Rail Splitters returned to the friendly confines of the LMU Soccer Complex and battled to a 1-0 win with league opponent Catawba, but gave up a 3-1 decision against Wingate in front of the alumni crowd on homecoming. The loss sparked the LMU women as they entered the 2013 SAC tournament as the league's number five seed and with the realization that their lives depended on their success in the tournament. That motivation also sparked their second win of the season over Catawba in a 2-1 to -one quarterfinal round victory and then fueled an inspirational 2 to nothing shutout of number 16 nationally ranked Lenore Rhine to avenge their regular season loss in Hickory and to advance to the Food Line South Atlantic Conference Tournament Championship. Unfortunately, the SAC championship is where the Lady Rail Splitters' season would come to an end as Wingate defeated the LMU women for the second time during the 2013 campaign by handing the Lady Splitters a 2-1 loss in the conference tournament title match. With very few seniors on the squad, a host of young talent that turned in a 10-8-1 season finish, and another strong recruiting class by Heli Odana, the 2014 Lady Rail Splitters should have the right mix for a team that can again make a run at the SAC regular season and conference tournament titles. One thing is for certain, however, LMU's women's soccer program is back on the map and will be a contender with the best that the NCAA Southeast region has to offer for years to come. For the Lincoln Memorial University volleyball team, the 2014 season was one that had plenty of excitement and many individual milestones, but ultimately ended short of several goals the team set before the season began. With a final record of 18-13 and, and a 14-8 and eight regular season conference mark, the Lady Rail Splitters' goals of winning the 2013 SAC regular season and tournament titles and earning a sixth consecutive trip to the NCAA Southeast Region Tournament all came to an end when they finished fourth in the regular season standings and then were defeated in the quarterfinals of the SAC tournament by the Wolves of Newberry College. For seniors Caitlin Walton and Chelsea Farron, the loss in the SAC tournament represented the first time during their illustrious four-year careers they wouldn't move on to the big dance. Individually, however, both ended their careers among the all-time leaders in various statistical categories throughout the LMU record book and are considered as two of the best in terms of wins and losses over a four-year career with an 84-42 and 42 collegiate record. Farron joined the top 20 all-time greatest LMU players in serve attempts with 974 over a four-year period in only 403 sets, while Walton finished her career in sixth place all-time with 1,111 career kills, joining an elite group of only 10 former Lincoln Memorial University volleyball players who have surpassed the 1,000 kills plateau. With a solid foundation of returning letter winners who were proven and battle-tested in 2013 and another highly anticipated recruiting class for the upcoming fall schedule, Jenny Michael and the Lady Rail Splitters will no doubt again be ranked among the conference preseason picks to finish at or around the top of the pack by the end of the 2014 season. Turning to cross-country, the 2014 schedule proved to be a difficult one for head coach Jeremy Donahue and the Lincoln Memorial University men's and women's cross-country teams. 
The loss of key experienced runners on both squads from 2012, combined with a plague of injuries to both teams at critical points throughout the 2013 season, hampered both squads' performances. Donahue's men were able to capture two fifth-place finishes, but were only able to garner team scores in four of their seven races in their 2014 campaign due to a shortage of players attributed to injury. The women's cross-country team also ran in seven races last fall and placed inside the top five in two of those events while finishing seventh at the SAC Championship, but were forced to endure two instances in which they were able to produce no team score due to a shortage of runners. The LMU women ended the season in the 2013 NCAA Regional Championship with a 19th place finish, while their male counterparts also participated in the event, crossing the tape as a team in 13th place. November and the beginning of the 2013-14 basketball season got underway with a bang for the Lincoln Memorial University Lady Rail Splitters as the LMU women won their first four games, including back-to-back victories over South Atlantic Conference opponents Queens and Anderson. Things went south in December, however, as Roger Hodge and his team lost their next five outings and were 4-5 and five more than a third of the way through the regular season schedule. One game into the new year, the Lady Rail Splitters again managed to pick up momentum as they bounced back from a loss in their opening game of 2014 to Lenore Rhine with consecutive league victories over Anderson, Wingate, Tusculum, and Queens. Then 8-5 and five on the year, the LMU women had the opportunity to again extend their win streak for a sixth straight time on January 22nd, but stumbled at home against league opponent Mars Hill College before bouncing back to knock off both Catawba and Brevard on the road. As February got started, again the Lincoln Memorial women tasted a home defeat when they dropped a narrow 58-55 decision to Coker in the Tex Turner Arena. Although the victory sparked back-to-back wins over Carson Newman and Newberry, the Lady Rail Splitters would drop a 63-55 loss to Lenore Rind and a 61-57 home setback to Tusculum before closing out the regular season with a run of four consecutive victories entering the 2014 Food Lion South Atlantic Conference Tournament. By virtue of the Lady Rail Splitters' 15-7 regular season conference record, the LMU women entered the 2014 tournament as the number 3 seed and were paired with the number 6 Trojans of Anderson University, a team which they had swept both home and away during the year. As fate would have it, that old adage that it's hard to defeat the same team three times in one season was true, and the Lincoln Memorial women's basketball season came to an end in the quarterfinals of the SAC tournament with a 71-64 overtime loss to Anderson in Harrogate. What the women's basketball team failed to achieve this season, the Lincoln Memorial University men seemed to more than make up for. Josh Schertz and his team entered the year nationally ranked, and like their female counterparts, also reeled off four straight wins to open the year before falling in the second game of the conference schedule to Jason Taylor and the Trojans of Anderson University. The loss brought the high-flying rail splitters back to reality and sparked a run that saw the team win their next 13 consecutive outings before the run came to an end February 5th in Jefferson City, Tennessee, when the rail splitters lost only their second game to arch-rival Carson Newman University, falling to 17-2 on the year. Following the setback, again the team regrouped and put together an 11-game run that helped them capture the South Atlantic Conference regular season and conference tournament titles, an automatic bid to the NCAA Southeast Region Tournament, and numerous individual conference, region, and national awards for team members Vincent Bailey, Chance Jones, Lorenzo Ross, and Luquan Choice. For his efforts at the helm, head coach Josh Schertz was named 2014 SAC Coach of the Year and received the prestigious Red Arbach Award, a national award given each year to one collegiate coach across the country. In addition to the individual postseason accolades, the Rail Splitters ended the year with a 28 and 3 overall record and a 20 and 2 conference mark, which extended the team's streak of being nationally ranked to 58 consecutive weeks while finishing the year ranked 7th among the NCAA Division II men's basketball member institutions. The mark of 28 victories was the most wins in a single season since joining the conference nearly a decade ago, and the most wins by a league team in the single season history of the entire South Atlantic Conference. With the loss of only two seniors from this year's championship squad and a strong stable of returning letter winner and redshirt freshman talent, combined with another marquee recruiting class, the 2014-15 rail splitter ceiling could be even higher than what this year's team accomplished, as Josh Schertz will enter his seventh season at the helm of a now nationally prominent rail splitter program. Off at mycokerewards.com. No 
No matter whether it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner, Subway of Harrogate and Middlesbrough has your fresh interest at heart. On your way to work, try one of our mouth-watering breakfast sandwich or flatbread omelets. If it's lunch or dinner time, choose from our wide selection of classic, select, or premium sandwiches, all made to your order. If you're serving a crowd, Subway has sandwich platters, giant subs, box lunches, and even cookie platters. Whether it's dine-in or carry-out, you can eat healthy and eat fresh at Subway. Subway, 362 Catawba Avenue in Harrogate and on the corner of the Village Square Mall, Middlesbrough. It's the Old Town Grill. The Old Town Grill is a special place where you bring more than family, more than friends. Bring a hearty appetite, because at the Old Town Grill, you'll never walk away hungry. A delicious change from the ordinary. The perfect place to bring the entire family. The best food and plenty of it. Join the fun and treat your appetite to something special. It's the OTG. The OTG is the place to be. I will help families adopt children from around the world and in our own backyard. I am teaching ethics to the next generation of lawyers. I will make a difference for the underserved of this region. I will be an advocate for my clients. As a prosecutor, I fought for those who couldn't speak for themselves. I'm a lawyer and professor. I will be a lawyer. I will be a lawyer. I will be a lawyer. Welcome back to the Rail Splitter Athletics Report and this year-end review of the 2013-14 season for LMU Athletics. You know, the spring season got started, but it didn't happen without the bar being set very high by the basketball teams and some of the fall results. As you can see right here, there was a lot taking place in the spring. Women's golf and the rail splitter baseball team actually got the spring athletic season started. With snow and cold conditions bearing down on the tri-state area, the Lady Rail Splitters traveled down to the warm conditions of Kiowa Island, South Carolina to participate in the annual Kiowa Island Invitational held at Cougar Point Golf Club and finished 15th among the 18 teams participating in the season opening event. The finish proved to be the furthest back in the field the team would place throughout the entire season, as head coach Travis Muncy and his team turned in top 10 finishes in three of their next four events, including an eighth place finish in the 2014 Food Lion South Atlantic Conference Championship in Sevierville, Tennessee at Sevierville Golf Club. Although the season didn't end in a South Atlantic Conference title, the young and talented Lady Rail Splitters lost only one player to graduation following 2014 spring season and return a solid foundation of what should be a strong contender for one of the top spots in next year's conference race. The Lincoln Memorial University men's golf team entered the spring season with high expectations after capturing their second South Atlantic Conference championship in 2013. The rail splitters picked up right where they left off a year earlier, reeling off 11 top 10 finishes among the 12 matches in which they played. In fact, the rail splitters garnered nine top five finishes, which included capturing four championship honors, but in the end, the ultimate goal of winning back-to-back -back conference tournament titles eluded them when they finished fourth at the 2014 Food Line South Atlantic Conference Championship in Sevierville, Tennessee. Many factors came into play at the event, but ultimately the rail splitters simply didn't play well enough to win this year's title. Having lost only one player to graduation following the season, the 2015 rail splitters are expected to be the team to beat next year in the South Atlantic Conference, and all of its team members will have another year of collegiate experience and the memory of the one that got away working in their favor when they hit the links next fall. While the women's golf team was hitting the links further down in South Carolina, Jeff Six I and the Rail Splitter baseball team went into battle in the western portion of the state when they traveled down to Aiken, South Carolina for their annual season opening series with the Pacers of the University of South Carolina Aiken. When the team took the field in defense of its 2013 South Atlantic Conference tournament title, it did so without 11 position players lost from 2013 and a lot of questions yet to be answered. Following their opening two games against the Pacers, those questions were still a mystery as LMU dropped 8-2 and 10-0 decisions to USC Aiken before salvaging an 8-5 win in the final game of the series. At 1-2 on the season, the Rail Splitters returned to South Carolina the following week to open conference play against the Wolves of Newberry College. After dropping the first two of three games to the Wolves, Six I and his club went on a tear that saw the Rail Splitters win eight of their next nine outings that included wins over Tusculum College, Carson Newman University, and a sweep of league opponent Lenore Ryan University. After taking two of three from the Eagles in Jefferson City, again the Rail Splitters rallied to reel off wins in their next five games to sweep Kentucky State University in regional play and to take a two games to one split with Catawba in league action. The loss in the final game of the series with the Indians put the Rail Splitters on their heels somewhat as LMU split a non conference regional doubleheader with Bellarmine University in Louisville before winning the first game of a three game series with regional opponent Armstrong Atlantic State University, only to drop the next two and lose the series. 
From there, the team returned to the Lamar Hennon Field to drop a regional bout with Young Harris before bouncing back to complete their third conference sweep of the year with consecutive victories over Brevard College and then enduring another non-conference regional split with the University of Alabama Huntsville. The month of April got off on a good note for the rail splitters when they took a single nine-inning game with Shorter College by winning 13-8. The effort was backed by a two-games-to-one split with conference opponent Coker College the following weekend and dominating victories over Kentucky State University and the University of Virginia Wise out of league play before falling in only their second conference series of the year to Anderson University in a two-games-to-one split. Still in the driver's seat entering the final week of regular season play with a chance to gain a share of first place by the year's end in the regular season standings. The Bulldogs of Wingate University and Mother Nature eliminated any chance of that when Wingate crushed the rail splitters 15-8 in the opening game of the final series of regular season play and then reinforced the cancellation of games 2-3 and three to give LMU a final regular season mark of 16-8 and eight and the number 3 seed entering the 2014 Food Lion Sack Tournament. With the opening game of the tournament came a chance to avenge the losses they suffered in the opening weekend of conference play to Newberry. Six Ida's team seized that opportunity and advanced to the winner's bracket with a 7-2 win over the Wolves, but were unable to repeat the effort when they lost their next two tournament games to Wingate and eventual champion Catawba to end the year with a 27-17-1 season record. With only two starters lost to graduation from this year's team, the 2015 rail splitters should certainly be one of, if not the team, to look for to emerge as the next Food Line South Atlantic Conference Tournament champion. The SAC president's decision to lift the league's scholarship restriction should only allow head coach Jeff Sixai to strengthen what could arguably be the SAC's strongest returning team a year from now. For Benny Collins and the Lincoln Memorial University men's and women's tennis teams, the 2014 season proved to be a promising one. Despite the loss of four-time All-South Atlantic Conference performer Philip Hoffman, the rail splitters were coming off of their second SAC tournament title in the past five years and returned a host of experience at the top and the middle of the singles lineup and in doubles play. The Lady Rail Splitters had undergone an overhaul at the top of the lineup in the past two seasons with the loss of all-conference performers Sofia lopez Miamendi and Leah Dunoff, but with arguably the best women's recruiting class since Collins took over the helm of the program, the LMU women had realistic intentions of making a run at both the regular season and conference tournament titles in 2014. As the season got underway, it was quickly evident that things were going to be a little more difficult than expected. While the LMU women won their opening two matches, the LMU men dropped four of their first five, including conference bouts with Tusculum and Lenore Rhine. Although both teams had their moments during the 2014 season that gave LMU fans a glimpse of things to come, ultimately injuries, inexperience, and bad breaks cost each of the programs the opportunity to achieve goals that they had set before the season began. The LMU women ended the year with an 8-8 eight and eight overall record and a 5-6 and six South Atlantic Conference mark, while failing to make the round of six teams in the league tournament in Rock Hill, South Carolina for the first time since Collins took over the program more than a half decade ago. For the LMU men, a disappointing 6-9 and nine season finish combined with a 4-7 and seven conference record not only failed to earn them a spot in the conference tournament, but also prevented them from repeating as conference tournament champions. Next season won't be any easier for the rail splitters with the loss of five seniors from this year's squad. However, good times are on the horizon with the lifting of the SAC scholarship restriction and the recruiting abilities of head coach Benny Collins. For the LMU women, who are comprised of primarily freshmen and sophomores and who now have another year of collegiate experience under their belts, the future is bright for 2015 as the lineup should only be better and wiser with that knowledge working in their favors and more talent coming in. The last team to close out the 2014 spring season was the Lady Rail Splitter softball team. Still in the infant stages of her head coaching career, Natalie Layden and this year's LMU softball program made some big waves throughout the South Atlantic with a strong regular season showing. The LMU women got off to a great season start, winning 4-2 over number 25 nationally ranked Columbus State and winning 11 out of their first 13 games, which included a split with number 15 nationally ranked North Georgia. Mixed between conference regular season sweeps of Queens, Newberry, and Mars Hill, and splits with league opponents Tusculum, Coker, Anderson, Carson Newman, Lenore Ryan, and Catawba, the Lady Rail Splitters continued to battle through what could be looked at as the toughest regular season schedule since joining the league nearly a decade ago. Layden and her team would go on to lose twice to number 6 nationally ranked Armstrong Atlantic State in tight matchups before knocking off number 18 Lenore Ryan in the second game of a conference road series. Although the LMU women earned the number 5 seed in the 2014 Food Lion Sack Tournament, neither the home field advantage nor their 12-8 regular season conference finish, which included going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best the league had to offer, would make any difference in the outcome of the event, as the Lady Rail Splitters bowed out in back-to-back -back games with a 9-2 loss to number 4 seed Tusculum and a 6-5 season-ending setback to number 1 seed Lenore Rhine. 
Only a week after falling in their opening two games of the tournament, the Lady Rail Splitters still ranked as the NCAA Southeast Region's number eight team, but were not chosen to participate in the postseason big dance. The 2014 LMU softball team ended the year with a successful 26-17 overall record, and with the loss of four seniors from this year's squad, 2015 looks to be an exciting one for Natalie Layden and the Lady Rail Splitters softball program. That, however, is another season away, and thus, this year's athletic season here at Lincoln Memorial University has officially come to a close. The Duncan School of Law at LMU, where innovative teaching meets cutting-edge technology. If you love your car or truck, let us help you keep it clean at Soapy J's. Soapy J's has unlimited wash plans to fit every budget. Try our $5 express wash or one of our three monthly wash plans. The wheel deal. The Soapy J. Or the new Blast Wax. With our monthly wash plans, if you pay with credit card, all you do is pay for the present month and your card will be billed on the first of each month. Don't forget, Soapy J's has free vacuums with any wash. Soapy J's express car wash open seven days a week. Let us help keep your car or truck clean at Soapy J's. Soapy J's on the Cumberland Gap Parkway, Middlesboro. We represent the Coke brand, and we would love to somehow bring some kind of legal action against Coke Zero. There might be some taste infringement issues. There's really no legal concepts of a company bringing a lawsuit against itself. If this is the king of the jungle, they're acting like the toucan that's right. on the branch, real colorful and preening, right. and showing off, and hey, look at, look at us. I want to take a stick and knock that toucan off the branch. Yeah. Da, 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 da. One of the area's best kept secrets when it comes to piping hot fast food is World of Wings Cafe and Wingery located in the LMU Campus Center. No matter whether it's chicken tenders, chicken wraps, burgers, or hot wings in a variety of flavors, WOW has a menu that's second to none. Try one of our fantastic sides like our fried mushrooms, fried pickles, mozzarella sticks, onion rings, our famous cheese fries, sweet potato fries, or our Texas toast. Shock your taste buds at WOW World of Wings Cafe and Wingery located in the LMU Campus Center. Again, welcome back to the show. Hey, it's hard to believe that uh, this 2013-14 season has now come and gone. It got started in September for those of us who watched the games. For the players and the athletes and coaches throughout the university, it got started long before that with uh, preseason practice and all the preparations that they have as individuals and as teams to get ready for their respective years. Nonetheless, it was a successful season for all LMU athletic teams. And when you look at the big picture in terms of how successful Lincoln Memorial was throughout the year as uh, compared to the other 11 teams throughout the South Atlantic Conference, I think, I think you'll see the uh, LMU athletic teams among the upper echelon of the league. So for all the coaches now, the uh, main subject at hand would be obviously recruiting for the 2014-15 season. That's a never-ending process that's ongoing throughout the year, but now they step it up a little bit. For the players and athletes, especially for those who are coming for their last go-round as uh, an LMU student athlete, uh, both on the collegiate level and throughout the uh, institution here at LMU and the South Atlantic Conference. It's an opportunity to step their game up a little bit in the offseason, and uh, that's how champions are made. You go in, you put in the extra effort, and that's just what we're looking forward to. The 2014-15 season is just right around the corner, folks. To keep up to date on everything going on this summer and beyond, pull up the LMU Athletics website, www.lmurailsplitters.com. For the Railsplitter Athletics Report, I'm Rusty Peace. Until next year, good night, everybody.